part where you get to pose questions to our panelists. Um, and I, I, I just want to uh, offer a, a couple of reflections um, on what I found because um, I started off, when I walked in the door, I ran into Barbara Romo, and we both ended up talking about uh, a, a project that we both had in mind. Right, um, uh, 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 building what could be done. It's near UB, and you know we both teach at UB, and and it was weird to say, oh my gosh, you've been thinking about that too. And it really impressed upon me that the potential for innovation, right, exists all over, right. But these these panelists have activated that potential, and and so it raises the question about what fuels innovation, um, and in these uh, incredible stories. We heard a lot right, about what fuels innovation. Um, we heard about tragedy and grief, right, and, and its relationship to, to innovation, uh, adversity and resilience. Um, we also heard about the important role of mentorship, um, and particularly female mentors who support and challenge us, right? So, uh, Norma's grandmother and Rawa's mother uh, in the Republican Party, right? <laughs> Things that challenge us. Um, we certainly heard about how important education is. Um, and this idea uh, that uh, Rawa introduced about uh, being on the edge, right? Ecotom? Is that Ecotom. Right? Or the, the kind of having a foot in both worlds and being able to, from that very critical position, right, figuring out some things that allow you to innovate. Um, we heard about commitment to collaboration. Uh, a willingness to be in uncomfortable places and spaces. Um, and uh, from, from uh, Bernice, the, the belief that you can make a difference, right? That it's very important to believe that you can make a difference. Um, I, I'm going to start off with one question for the panelists. And we have uh, a microphone that we can pass around. Um, and so if anyone would like to answer this, uh, it's really on the subject of women in leadership. Um, and it uh, borrows from another famous Eleanor Roosevelt quote. Uh, not, <laughs> and this one is about um, uh, women uh, and, and public, in, in public spaces, right? So Eleanor Roosevelt famously said that a woman in the public sphere needs to grow thick skin like a rhinoceros. <laughs> and interestingly, Hillary Clinton has also cited this quote. Um, how does this advice ring true? For you all, um, and you know, it, well, does it? And if if it does, how have you grown a thick skin as a public advocate? And what advice do you have for women? Um, I'll just talk for a quick second about um, being in the development world with a bunch of older white Italian men. <laughs> this is Frank. It's just Frank. It's Frank. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. Um, I've had to grow a thick skin, and often every day, Sid and I have conversations about, and she's going to yell at me for saying this, but it's, it's come to, I, I completely agree with her now, is I used, to, I used to say, up until yesterday, I wish I had balls. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know that's a vulgar, but it's true. So. Um, but I say it because, and we had this lovely conversation about, um, you know, I have to walk in a room, and I have to be different. I have to be fierce, but I also have to be playful. And it's something I can play really well. Like, oh, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Looking good today, sir, you know. And we're able to pull those things up. And it's actually a really great thing about being woman because we can be fierce but playful. And um, and I think that, um, as I said, I want to have, like, a little, uh, you know, I need to wear, like, a button that says, like, don't mess with me, right? But what, we, what Sid and I discussed at the office was, they get it. They know not to mess with me. They know because that I've been able to put my my foot forward and talk and be who I am. And they, for the most part, there's respect there. So I would say that it is hard, and you have to have a thick skin. And even though, as a zoning board member, and I'll say this publicly, um, you know, I get railed uh, on decisions that we make at the board. And like last July or in July, I cried myself to sleep. I see people like talking about me negatively. Uh, and, and that's fine, people are entitled to opinions, doesn't mean, and that, it broke that skin, it tore me open, 
And, and honestly, and then I'm like, why am I so upset, you know? But the whole point is, um, it, I think it's, a, it's good to be fierce. And I asked Kelly, what did I ask you just earlier? I said, were those three women feisty? And she said, yes, they were feisty. And I think <laughs> it's, our, uh, it's our opportunity to use mm -hmm. our femininity to be feisty and, um, and also fierce, but also a little soft at times. Oh, well, I'd just like to say that I think strength manifests itself in many different ways. And I like to think that it, it shows strength to rise above um, some of the kinds of things that go on in city politics. Mm -hmm. And it, it, was, it wasn't that I wasn't frustrated and furious behind closed doors, but when I went out in the public, I just talked about positive things and dismissed them because my mother always told me to just to that ignoring somebody that is a pain in the mm -hmm. neck is a, is a, a way to handle it. Just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that doesn't necessarily apply across the board, but um, in the case of being in um, the political world, it can get very vicious and very nasty and very personal. And if you just say to yourself, I'm, I'm just going to be positive. And some of the prog uh, programs that uh, we're working on, Marika, which Frank Sign and I are very busy with the um, solar power carousel that's going down on the waterfront. And uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, ups and downs to being involved in a public project. But we are uh, continuing to remain positive and um, we hope that that carousel, and I just want to mention, this is a Tesla-related event, and we're celebrating Tesla's wireless uh, concepts mm -hmm. with this, um, by the largest demonstration of solar power in the community, um, UV holds that distinction for our region, mm -hmm. I and mean, they have huge solar installations, they've got wonderful programs, the solar decathlon and all that, we're so lucky to have the leadership of UV in renewable energy. But we like to think that our solar powered carousel is going to raise public consciousness about and help with the transition from fossil fuel based uh, society to a renewable energy based society, which is doing our little thing. And um, I encourage all of you to come out on Saturday morning, 10.30 at Birchfield Penny, we're going to have a program about the solar power carousel and the restoring of all those horses and everything. My answer is uh, be careful of false solutions. Um, I think we are women, we're not rhinoceros. Um, and that, just to be literal for a minute, is that um, I, I don't. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, it's just not working. And I only say that to say is if we just understood our own power. Mm. Uh, you know, I remember when I was uh, doing some science experiment, I don't remember, I was in high school, I remember just having a conversation about, you know, the idea if men could give birth to babies. Mm. And then there was this thing going around that actually they could physically, there is a place that they can carry it in their body, but they would literally die from the pain. And I remember <laughs> thinking, I was like, yes, I always knew we were stronger than that. <laughs> because I feel like many of the reasons why we're here today when we think about um, what is happening to the natural world and what is happening to our humanity is because we have given so much of that power up and that there is not a balance. Um, you know, in, in traditional um, societies, civilizations, it was metrilineal, you know, women were always in power, women always ran um, sort of the institutions um, and the decision making. And so we have given a lot of that up and there is an imbalance that imbalance sometimes is causing us, at least that's how it shows in popular culture right now to me, is that women are beginning to take very similar sort of um, ways that men have. They're more violent, you see that with young girls and what have you. Mm -hmm. and they, we think we have to compete with men, mm -hmm. uh, to be heard, to be whatever, when a lot of times, like when I'm dealing with my four-year-old, if he, because they're very challenging, <laughs> I actually will like stoop down to his level and I'll whisper. And I don't know why, but that stops him. 
Mm -hmm. So it's almost like taking that and doing like a little bit of a jujitsu. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, and you can still like be a woman, be feminine, be vulnerable, be you know righteous, and all of these other things. But I think. The lessons that I'm learning at the age that I'm at right now is sort of flipping everything, all the different narratives that we hear, that we're so prescribed to, to sort of flip them on their head. Um, if you're into hip hop, just flip it and rewind it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think as women too, we tend to find ways to work together, right? It's collaboration, and you let go of a lot of the things that, for whatever reason, testosterone. You know, I have to be leader. I've got to be at the top of the pile. I don't have to be at the top of the pile. If there's a group of women together, we reach the top. That to me is much greater for us. Yeah. And I think, you know, skin like a rhinoceros, you know, rhinoceros, I just can't, you have to just be resilient. And if someone says something, I just, I let it go. <coughs> but I come back around them and I get them in a, in a different direction. Right? <laughs> right. So you outfox them at their own game. And it's intimidation, and it's actually men are bullies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I look at the example that's currently being set, and I'm looking at the children that are growing up today, this is what they see. This is not how we grew up. This is not what we were taught as is, is citizens. And it's very frightening to me because where is the world headed where you have this, these people that are allowed to just throw a bigger amount than you? Well, wasn't that when you were in the 60s? Think about what went on in those days. We grew up, we survived that. And now we're facing it again. I'm 60 years old and I cannot believe that this is what's going on. Yeah. But again, I think women, and Amber knows this, how do, how do you go forward? How do you get people to understand that, first of all, they want to take power away from us. They want to change our health care. They want to put women in a position where you are always subservient. And we have to do something about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, any ideas? band together, no matter what your backgrounds are, find our common ground, 